Okay, we're going to look at this object and how you should set it up. So in first year we went through constructors. This is a default constructor. The reason you would have one is if your class, for instance, didn't need any of the stuff inside of it for it to exist. So the person that you're storing doesn't need a first name, last name, phone number, address or postcode, then just make it a default constructor because they don't need it. But if you're ever going to have to access that, you might have to give it defaults. So inside here, you'd set it all up to be an empty string or something. But it's important to remember that if you need your classes to contain information, you can't have a default constructor. Or you can, but you have to give it something inside of it that makes, makes sense. Right? If you need your person to have a, for instance, first name, last name, phone number, address, postcode, you're going to have to create a constructor specifically for that, and it's always going to have to have that inputted. So take a GUI program, for instance. When you're creating a new member for a, we'll use the swimming program again, because we were talking about that in the last video. If you're creating a new member for that, you definitely need their names and their phone number and their address, right? So you might have a GUI that has different fields, and you might have data validation in there to make sure that they're actually filled out but you only need one constructor. What this does is it gets rid of the need to have the, for instance, different um, different functions that will actually do it. So if I wanted to actually set the first name, that I'd have to take in a string and then I'd have to edit the string directly. So if I want to change the first name, I'd do that. So that can set the first name. Because the first name is not public, you don't want to have uh, direct access to anything inside of your program that can be edited. You want to have to run it through functions. right? So that way you can stop people from having um, direct access. You uh, mitigate the ability to directly edit the data inside your system because you have to be able to somehow know what the functions are called and all that kind of stuff to do it. So this is a principle we were taught in Java Programming 1 I believe but it's important to remember it and basically that's it if you want to set it like that but if you want to use a constructor instead you do it this way okay so say you say I want to create a new person so say I'm in my arrays back in my arrays and or back in my normal class and at the start of this I want to create a new person so I create a new person right that would currently work okay because I have a default constructor here that does nothing but if I took away that default constructor so by commenting it out, it now does not compile because it says here actual and formal argument lists differ in length. So this is that thing that says you've asked me to create something or you've asked me to run a function and it requires certain things and you've given me nothing or you've given me, so this, this one says you've given me um, not enough things or you've given me too many things, right? Once you give it the right amount of things but if it's a different type it'll say expected types differ or something like that. So what it's meaning is, hey, you've created a new person, or you tried to, but there's nothing here that says that a person can have nothing in it. I need something like this, for instance. So the person needs to have a first name, last name, and so on and so forth. So to do that, I'd say, okay, so you click on it, if you want to check it, you say here, required, Java lang string, so just look at the end, so it needs a string, it needs a string, 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 string. It takes all strings, and you can go into the class to check out what it is that actually requires. So fn, you want to give it meaningful names, fn first name, ln last name, phone number, address, postcode. Right? So I want it to be called just a random name, Ashneel. Who knows who that is? Don't know who that guy is. And um I want his what's next? His phone number to be We'll just make it simple. We'll just do 0403657882, right? And then I want his address to be 
31. Uh, Lasher caught. And his postcode can be 3457. Right? Now when I compile, it compiles because it expects this many strings inputted and it gets that many. There's no, it doesn't check anything else. These could all be empty for all the compiler cares, but as long as it has what it needs, it can assign it, right? Because now whenever it assigns it, it assigns it like that. So that is why we use constructors. We use them to make sure that whatever we're creating is constructed in a way where it can be accessed as it needs to, right? So what if I had a function down here called get details, right? And I don't want it to be void, I want it to return a string. Okay, I want it to return a string of whatever details the person has. Okay. So I could do I could create a string here, string debt for details equals let's see, first name. And I use the plus to signify that I'm appending another string to this. Plus I try and keep all my code. Uh, clean so on the first line it's going to have first name that and then the next line it's going to have not like this there we go it's not going to have first name anymore it's going to have last name it's just a way of formatting it and then it's going to have their phone number the address and their postcode. Additionally, I will say another thing here, which is member. Are they a member? And now I have to change all these to make sure that these match up as well. The last name. Make sure that these variable names match up to whatever you put in the top. Right, so I don't need this plus here anymore. That's done. Member, and that's it. That's the new string. I've just created a string that will display all the details of this person. Now, if I had created it with a constructor that was empty, this wouldn't work. It would all come out with um, nothing on it. And it would also... Mm, I don't think it would throw any actual errors, but you might get... You just get a bit of an issue with it. Okay? So what you want to do is make sure that either assigned or if it doesn't have anything in it, you want to throw an error back saying this person doesn't actually have all the details that you need or something like that. So I have created a string that I'm going to give back. I haven't actually given it back yet though. So I have to say I want to return this string. <coughs> there you go. It returns a string. If I compile this, no errors, good. So what's important to take out of this is the way we structure our objects is important and integral to how we're going to be using our program and how the users are going to be using our program. So if you notice inside this program, I haven't actually printed or done anything with this information. All I'm doing is returning it to whatever's requesting it. If I wanted to print, I could go back in here and then say, for instance, I created that person, P, oh well, I'd say system.out.println P dot get details right that prints out the details alternately there is another way of doing it by overriding the two string method and we'll cover that in a later tutorial but for now just remember that you can call functions using the print line and anything like that okay so Going back on the scope and that tutorial, if you look in here, anything to do with a function and how to use it. So this function only serves one purpose to get the details. This function only serves the purpose of setting the first name. This constructor only serves the purpose of constructing. Okay, It's important to remember this because if you find yourself in a situation where you've got a function that does random amounts of things or you don't know what to do, step back, look at your code objectively, say, does this achieve what its function is set out to do? If you don't know what the function is set out to do because you've named it wrong or you've named it something weird, you should start putting comments at the start. So 
I'm going to say then this one. So I know that this function is going to return all the details of the person. So now whatever I change this to, this name here, I can change this to, for instance, that. But I still know that it returns the details of the person. That said, don't do that because you want to have it um, as a meaningful name. Okay, so that is the end of the object tutorial, and we will go into more advanced detail on this later on.